I'm Sam Jacob. I'm one of the co-curators of the British Pavilion here at the Venice Biennale. The show uh, is called A Clockwork Jerusalem, and the pavilion really tries to tell the story of, on the one hand, modernity in Britain, but also the, the responses to modernity. The central installation is evocative of a feature of the Boundary Estate, which is one of the first social housing projects in, in Britain, if not the world, um, where the, the ruins of the, the slum before were piled up to create the park at the centre of this new um, this kind of reformist development. The, the mound then is both representative of, I suppose, the beginning, but also of the end. It's a burial mound. It's the, you know, it's the, the slums reformed into the possibilities of a new future. Um, and it's, I guess, a provocation, actually. It's a kind of question back to British architecture is, you know, is there a way in which we can revive the, the kind of thinking which embodied the last century of, of really progressive, really imaginative architecture and planning? We then look really at the formal product of, of this period of, of architecture and planning, which are incredible structures and mega structures, things of incredible scale, but also incredible complexity. So we have a model of the, the human state, and it was uh, the largest public housing project in, in Europe, um, built in the early 70s in Manchester. The architects of the estate were really trying to make a kind of democratic version of the Royal Crescent in Bath, but made for the masses, like we could all live in something as good as the, the Bath Crescents. But interestingly enough, the architects of the Bath Crescent had Stonehenge in mind when they were designing the, the crescent shape of, of Bath. So you can see this incredible sort of leaps of history from Stonehenge to, to the Royal Crescent in Bath to the Hume Estate. We then uh, uh, look at, I suppose, how certain traditions within British architecture, the picturesque and the pastoral, were reimagined and reloaded. We show, for example, Thamesmead through the eye of Stanley Kubrick with location scouting shots for, for uh, A Clockwork Orange to show really the visual appreciation of a filmmaker of the work of a local authority architects. Through the exhibition we try to make links which jump across categories and jump across eras and jump across the, the usual categorizations that, that, that happen in architecture and design. And one of those is, is really to do with the decorative. So we show, for example, uh, a piece of um, William Morris's willow uh, pattern wallpaper, but we also show much later example of the, the decorative, which is uh, plates by, people always need plates, the Trellick Tower pattern plates and mugs. I think there's a hope that could be embodied in these kinds of nostalgic products that once we could plan, once we could imagine that architecture and planning could be part of making a new world. The ambition that we have for the British Pavilion is really twofold. One is to tell a historical story, is to describe, certainly in our view, what happened and why and what it did. Um, but it's also, I suppose, a call to arms for, for contemporary British architecture, it, um, for it to re-engage with the kind of imaginative visions, the uh, entrepreneurial spirit of actually being able to affect change.